Hello, my amazing artists. Today we're going to create a Frida Kahlo inspired collage. To begin, please write your name on your paper and then turn it over. Today we're going to use watercolor paints. To open your paint palette, you need to pull down one of the tabs and then you can take off the cover. If you need help, just raise your hand and I'll help you. So as you can see, these watercolor paints are dry. You need to wake up your paint by putting a little bit of water on your brush and then set your brush into the color that you choose and you're going to roll it like I'm showing here. It's kind of like you're letting your brush soak in the color and then whenever you have color on your paintbrush, you are ready to paint. Your paintbrush always dances across the page. You never want to smush it down onto your page. Instead, think of it like a ballerina dancing on its tiptoes. When you're ready to change colors, you need to take a bath. Then, just like as we, after we wash our hair, we need to dry our hair. So we're gonna use the paper towel there like a towel. And you wanna make sure your paintbrush has a good hairdo. Notice all my brush, my bristles on my brush are in the same direction. That means the hairdo is looking good. I can move on and wake up a new color. So a little bit of water, roll your brush in the color that you're choosing. This is called loading your brush with color. And then you're going to paint different lines on your paper. So today your goal is to use watercolor paint and create different lines on your paper. You are welcome to choose any types of lines that we have looked at in class and you can have different colors. That is up to you as the artist. Since we are using watercolor, if you notice that the color of the paint is not really standing out, that means that you need to go back into your paint and pick up some more color. You could even go over your lines a few times if you want really bright colors. If you don't want very bright colors, that means you need more water. Today is all about experimenting to see how much paint you need and how much water you need. The most important thing though, is that you have to take care of your paintbrush. That means before picking up a new color, you have to make sure that you clean it. When cleaning it, you want the hair, which is called bristles on your paintbrush, to be in one direction. Also notice that I'm painting in one direction. Otherwise, if I don't do this, the hair on the paintbrush could actually start to fall out. When you're done painting, make sure you clean the paintbrush one more time, close your paint palette like I did, and then it's time to clean up. That means we'll put your painting on the drying rack, which I'll show you how in class, but then at your workstation, use that paper towel to try to clean up your work mat as best as you can. Then it's time to return your cup. You're going to gently pour it down the sink and then set it in the dirty tub. In class, I'll show you where to put your watercolors. For our next step, you're going to take your green half sheet and fold it in half. Put your fingers in the middle and crease up, crease down. Then it opens kind of looking like a book or like a mouth. You want it to open away from you. So the side that's folded is near your belly. Then you're going to draw a line. You could use marker or pencil, and it's going to be a line that goes up and down, which is a vertical line, and then a line that goes side to side, horizontal line. Keeping your booklet closed, you're now going to cut on the line that you drew. So when we're cutting artists, you want to make little baby shark chops. So I'm going to chop, open, slide, chop, open, slide, chop, and I just continue. Then I use my holder hand to rotate the paper and I continue my chop, open, slide, chop, open, slide. Next up, you're going to take the red half sheet and you're actually going to glue what you just cut on top. 
So a few things. When we're using Mr. Glue Bottle, you want to turn the top of the glue bottle. You know you opened it if there's a little gap. You see that? Then when we're using glue, it's always important to just use a little bit at a time. So I'm going to put glue on the red paper, making the same shape that the green piece is. Next thing, when I'm done, you need to close the Mr. Glue bottle. Then you're ready to put your paper on top. I'm putting paper on top of paper and gluing it. This is called a collage. When you collage things, you wanna take your fingers and have them do little steps, little itty bitty steps on top, just massaging those papers together, making sure that they stick and can stay there. With that leftover piece of green paper, we're going to use it to create another fruit. So look, I'm gonna turn this into actually an oval. All you have to do is cut the corners. So your helper hand is holding your paper and your cutting hand is very gently chomping as you are rotating the paper. This will act as another watermelon in our collage. Now with either a red or green piece of paper, you're going to turn this one into another watermelon. You have a few choices on how to do this. If you would like to make your watermelon look similar to the, one of the watermelons in Frida Kahlo's Lowe's paintings, all you do is trim the bottom in these curved lines. And then at the top, I'm gonna to turn it upside down and I'm gonna make zigzag cuts. So I'm making one diagonal cut and then I'm rotating and make a diagonal cut the other way. It's kind of looking like V's at the top or just a big zigzag line. This is up to you artists. You don't have to cut it this way, but if you would like to, that's an option. Another option is if you want this to look even more like a watermelon, you can use that same technique of cutting, trimming the corners to make them just a little curved. All right, next part. Now that our papers are cut and the glue has dried, we're going to add some details so we can tell that these are watermelon. Now, this whole artwork is a little abstract, so it, that means it doesn't look exactly like a real life watermelon would. That's okay. This is a little this gives you a little more freedom and how you want to decorate but if you'd like to decorate your watermelon like i am you are welcome to some other ideas are just using different types of lines and colors to add different designs and decorations to your watermelons that's totally up to you friends this does not look like a real life watermelon and that's okay i want it to look different just so it's a little more exciting. A great idea is to use different lines and different colors to create patterns on your watermelons. This will create a sense of rhythm throughout your artwork. The final step of this project is we're going to collage the watermelons onto your background. So before you glue, you want to arrange your watermelons in a composition. That means the way the pieces of the artwork are placed. Whenever you are happy with your composition, it is time to glue the watermelons down onto the background. Whenever you place them on your paper, make sure you give the paper a little massage by walking your fingers on top of the watermelons. And then also remember, if you want to overlap some of your watermelons, that's a great idea. That creates a sense of space. Some are in the front, some are in the back. You just have to remember which ones you're gonna glue down first because those will be in the back and then the ones in the front you'll glue on top. Now we will let these dry. 
But congratulations, artist. You just created your first collage inspired by Frida Kahlo's watermelon painting. I cannot wait to see what you create.